the little rock and roller. Rock and roll! Welcome to the 41st Electro Jet Rock Show. I'm your host, Jet, and we are doing great or not so great. So, and I have with me my esteemed co-host coming to you from L.A., Professor Electro. How's it going, Professor? It's going good. What's up, what's up, what's up? Out there, rock and rollers. Poison. Yeah, poison. Great or not so great? What do you think, P.E.? Well, you know, when we say great or not so great, to me, if this was a class and the professor was teaching... The students that were great would get an A, or even an A+. Plus. So that's not the whole class. It's only the ones who are excellent. And I have to ask myself, is Poison, do they deserve an A? Yeah. Well, they weren't terrible. They had some catchy songs. I mean, from the good side, they had some catchy tunes. They were definitely MTV-friendly. They had the, the look for the era. And, you know, C.C. DeVille, I like his guitar playing. But, you know, uh, on the other side of that, you know, they were kind of more image than substance to me. They were kind of a bumblegum, you know, hair metal band. <clears throat> I think a lot of what they did was borderline cliche also. Some of it was good, you know, but yeah, were they great? Uh, I don't know. You know, they were part of that group that was like the smiley, pretty glam metal bands like Bon Jovi and Poison and Warrant. They were all MTV friendly. They're always smiling in the camera. And on the other side of that, you had the non-smilers like Skid Row and Twisted Sister and Quiet Riot. Well, Quiet Riot was kind of in the middle. They did a little of the smiling. But, you know, I just, I can't really say, you know, that they were great. I'd Fallen Angels a great song. I like that one. I do uh, think John Purdell singing on that, by the way, produced by Tom interesting. Norman. Yeah, I did not know that. He, he's coming up everywhere. Yeah, the high uh, notes uh, on the harmonies. Uh, that sounds okay. like him. Uh, yeah, that's him. Nothing so, but a good time. And talk dirty to me. You know, those those are k- good, catchy songs. But I'd have to say not so great. Now, that doesn't mean that they're bad. I think that they're pretty good sometimes, you know, but I can't say that they're great. So I'm going to have to say Poison, not so great. J.E., what's your take? Okay, well, my take is this. I used to live approximately three miles, four miles, five miles from the Reseda Country Club. And uh, Saw Poison many, many, many times there. I saw him, I think, two times with Matt before CeCe was even in the band. And then I saw him a zillion times, like I probably every time they played, because all it, it was they were they were very fun because there'd be a lot, a lot of females that would show up for their gigs, and that's why their gigs were always packed in and sold out once they started taking off. So. Yeah, I saw them. Uh, I, I I can't even. Uh, we'd have to look up at the history if the, if those guys even know how many times they. Yeah, played. I went with you to a couple of those shows. I, I saw them live too, but probably not quite as many times as you did. But yeah, the country club being as close as it was to us, wow, that was a real ass. Yeah, in the San Fernando Valley, it was in Reseda, California, like in the Tom Petty song. But what Tom Petty's talking about is further, uh, a lot further south. So I digress. But anyway, yeah, so I saw them a zillion billion times. They were they were okay. I mean, they didn't they they the songs got a little better as they went along. I remember they used to have this one song, Mama. I think it's it's probably on the first one. Let me go to the show. I want to see all those bad boys playing that rock and roll. It was something like that. It was a cute little song. Uh, Brett Michaels, not no not much vocal range on him. Uh, not a lot of power. But uh, the the females really dug them, and they were uh, how they promoted their shows was uh, uh, Brett Michaels. It was almost like he was running for like senate or president. Everything was how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, Pennsylvania, <laughs> Pennsylvania accent. Yeah, lots of how you doings. You know, he's everybody's buddy. You know, we're all family here, and all that kind of stuff. And then, but their main thing was their promotion. They would, like, if any big band came to, like, say if Rat was playing at Long Beach Arena or something, or any big band, there was any rock and roll band, 
They would literally have teams of people with uh, five figure amounts of, of flyers promoting their next gig at the country club. And I'm, I'm not kidding, man. Every single car at the big concerts had a poison flyer on them. So, you know, that's how they made it by, you know, like shaking hands, kissing babes, you know, like they, I mean, it was like, yeah, it was like a political campaign almost, but a political campaign of fun. Now, as far as them being great, saw a YouTube video. It says, uh, it was from the last tour with Motley and Def Leppard. It said, CC DeVille playing Eddie Van Halen uh, eruption or something like that. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it. Yeah, he's playing. He, when I was watching it, it was like maybe 20 seconds of eruption. And then all the rest, Cecil, I got to give you props. Crushing it, it was all Randy Rhodes licks. It was phenomenal, man. So, Cecil, I will say great. As far as the band back then and now, um, I will say not so great, but they were a lot of fun, though. You know, I give them a great for fun, but as far, you know, Brett Michaels a little limited on the range. Pretty cool front man. They wrote some kind of catchy songs. Uh, supposedly, they. Re- I mean, I remember Cat Dragged In. I, li- I listened to that riff. I mean... That's a recycled riff of a recycled riff. It's really, uh, that's, um, Megalomania off Sabotage is the original of that, that, as far as I can trace back. So I love that. And it's a, it's a cool song, you know. They had some cool tunes, and then they had the number one, you know, Tom Worman produced it. Every Rose Has Its Thorn. They got a number one for that, and I got to give Tom Worman props on that. Saying, okay, you, he heard Brett play the song, and then, okay, I want you to ha- do it like that, and then have the band come in on the second verse and all that kind of stuff. And uh, John Purdell, Ozzy Osbourne producer, I think he's a, uh, he's he's definitely in there in the mix. He was working for Tom Worman at that time. So a lot of backing vocals from him, and you get him on your record, he makes anything sound uh, a lot better. But, you know, they needed the help. Ricky Rockets drumming. It's, it, you know, I, I think he can he play to a click or not? I don't know. Um, yeah. The, you know, he's, he, he's, you know, a serviceable glam drummer. I mean, he kept the groove. He wouldn't slow down or anything. And he got That's better. As the, he got better when they went along. Bobby Dahl was a very, very uh, great, fiery performer on stage. But, you know, just like a lot of uh, root note, at least when I used to go see him play at the country club yeah. all, all the time. I got to agree with that. Didn't even walk the bass on when they played a rock and roll all night. Didn't do the descending gene. He didn't even yeah, do that. He didn't, he didn't do that. So, you know, but it, 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 did anybody care? No. I mean, oh, it was great. They had the silly string out, you know, making a big mess at the end of the night. Yeah, so I'm going to say not so great. I'm going to say Cecil. (laughs) He used to get bagged on a lot back in the day, but he's really upped his game all these years, you know. Yeah, I got to say Cecil, great work. Cecil, great. The rest of the guys, eh, not so great. But if you, uh, as far as fun is involved, uh, they're great. They're great fun. They were great fun back in the day. We had a blast, and... uh, yeah, there was a lot of females around like that. Now they're all on their Instagram, on their phone, or whatever. Yeah, it's a, that's kind of the story of Poison. But we again, we were lucky to have the Country Club and Reseda as close as it was to us, and Hollywood just over the hill. So we did get to see Poison, you know, quite a few times. A lot of these other bands. So we do speak from experience back then, and I'm sure we'll be reviewing some other bands from that era and that area pretty soon as well. Yeah, they were a lot of fun back then, man. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I wonder what John Wayne's doing right now. My name is William Wayne. So, this is Jet signing off with... The Professor and... Ready Roll! Ready Roll!